have a great trip. All right. Thanks. <laughs> See you later, Joe. But did you remember to get a Mother's Day card? I did, <laughs> actually. I picked one up yesterday. Peter McKay is now 37. You'll be seeing your mother. Will I you? will. Yeah, my mother's uh, coming up. A lot of people uh, remember my father, particularly in this town, but my, my mother has been as much or more of an influence. His father is Elmer McKay, who was a senior cabinet minister in Brian Mulroney's government. It was a good time to be a Tory then. Mulroney had swept in with one of the largest majorities in Canadian history. McKay's parents separated when he was only eight years old. He was raised largely by his mother, but he had a first-hand view of his father's political success as well as his two failed marriages. I didn't, uh, I didn't grow up with a burning desire to be a politician, let alone the prime minister. I mean, I was around politics. Yeah. Um, I had vicarious experience through my father, and, but I also know that there's a cost associated with politics and public life. You mean a personal cost? Yeah. yeah. He became a defense lawyer in Nova Scotia and then a Crown prosecutor, which he says is the background to his fairly tough law and order views. You find yourself in some really gut-wrenching positions. Yeah. You know, uh, the sexual assault cases that I did, uh, some of those hmm. haunt me still. He ran federally first in 1997 in his hometown and his father's old riding, Picto Antigonish Guysborough, capturing it back from the Liberals. He's an avid rugby player, and the rough and tumble of the game perhaps translated into his aggressive performance as house leader. Why the delay? Which gave him a bit of a public profile. I understand competition, and you know whether it's in a, a rugby game or a courtroom or the House of Commons or a debate, um, people are out to you know, score points. He was re-elected in 2000 and later took on a prominent role in the formation of the Democratic Representative Caucus, the brief and unsuccessful attempt by PC and some Alliance MPs to settle their differences. McKay says he's still in favor of one United Conservative Party, although he's not advocating a merger. So are you talking about a PC party that absorbs the Alliance? Well, I wouldn't use those words, but I mean, technically that's I think that's the preferred option that would work for Canada. I used to photograph a guy who used to play like that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Pierre Trudeau, remember him? I've heard of him. Yeah. He's also really easy to embarrass. Okay. I wonder if I could have you looking up that way, please. Looks like a GQ ad. I know, I know. I, I was afraid you were going to say that. Does anyone ever make those comparisons? I mean, here you are, you're voted sexiest bachelor on the Hill for four years in a row. Here's Trudeau coming along as a dashing young bachelor. I mean, a lot older than you, actually, but he was seen as dashing and young then. I don't, Always clowning I don't around for the camera. I do, I do that <laughs> because I'm nervous, I think, more than anything else. And I just, uh, I enjoy having fun. I, I think um, this can be a very serious and very confining atmosphere from time to time. And my grandfather used to say, if you can't take a joke, don't be one. What kind of a leader do you think Peter McKay will be? He, he's interesting because he's to a large extent, a large extent I think, a blank slate. The support he has is in large part based on name recognition and history. There's a real opportunity to present himself fresh to Canadian eyes and to make a mark where there aren't, isn't a whole bunch of baggage and a series of prejudices against him. Have you done theater? <laughs> a little bit. Politics is kind of theater. Making a mark will be just one of his challenges if he's leader. Joe Clark, a former prime minister, could command media attention just because of his stature, even though the Tories are a tiny party in the House of Commons. It will be much harder for Peter McKay. I'm not suggesting or comparing myself um, to Mr. Clark in terms of his stature, his experience, his ability to get news. Uh, time will tell. And uh, this is a tough business. And I'll be judged uh, harshly, I suspect. Um, there's a very sta you know, high standard that's applied to leaders. Um, but I'm prepared to meet and surpass that standard. And uh, right into the end. We're done. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Peter. Leslie McKinnon, CBC News, Ottawa.